In this video, I'm going to be updating my stock scanning application powered by the TD Ameritrade API data feed. And we're going to get into the guts of an open source Ruby gem that I wrote called TD Ameritrade API Ruby that's designed to help connect to this API and digest its data. I'm kind of regretting the naming of this thing as it's very similar in name to the gem that I made for an old version of the TD Ameritrade API that used a different data format that was completely binary. So around 2018, TD Ameritrade modernized their API to use OAuth for authentication, and now it provides all of its data in the JSON format. My program needs a little bit of help with this authentication piece since when you're dealing with OAuth 2, there's a manual step that requires connecting an application via a web browser. So first of all, let me start by telling you a little bit how OAuth authentication works. OAuth is a web browser based authentication scheme that involves a web application, an API service that you want to interface, and the end user of the web application. When the end user is on the web app website, they're going to click a link that will take them off the site to a login page on the third party API's website, and it's going to look something like this. The end user will log in using their credentials on that third party website. Upon successfully logging in and authorizing access to that user's account, the third party API will issue a redirect to what's called a callback URL on the web application. Along with the redirect, there's going to be a parameter with a really long string called an authorization grant code. This grant code can be used to get another set of codes in a separate web request conducted behind the scenes by the web application server. The result of that web request is the tokens which are going to be used to access the API data, and they're called the access token and the refresh token. Note that in my diagram here, I'm using a yellow orangish color to represent what the web app is doing on the back end. The white arrows are redirects in the web browser that the end user can see, but the orange lines represent requests by the application that aren't seen by the end user. So the web app makes the backend request to a token endpoint with the authorization code, and returned are the access and refresh tokens. The access token is what's used for authentication for any further data requests to the API. Access tokens are short-lived, expiring usually in about a half an hour. It's kind of like a password that changes frequently. Your refresh token has a longer expiration, with about three months or so, and you can use it to hit an endpoint that will get you a brand new access token when the last one that you're using expires. Also, when you request that new access token, you'll also get a brand new refresh token that has an updated expiration date. Now, you might be wondering why OAuth 2 starts out with the authorization grant code, which is then used to get the access token. Why not just send back the access token in the first step and eliminate the need for the authorization code? I tried to research this to see if there's a solid engineering reason behind it, and was disappointed that I couldn't find a good answer. Other than that the access token is never seen by the end user and shouldn't be for security reasons. But the authorization grant code is exposed to the end user in the redirect request, and there's where it can be intercepted and used to get an access token and refresh token. It's not so much of a security hazard if the end user does this because all he'll be able to get out of that third party API is his own data anyway, but can a third party see the string? Well, the protocol is heavily reliant on HTTPS transport layer security to ensure that the authorization grant code does not get intercepted by a man in the middle attack. But if the end user's web browser is compromised with malware, the authorization grant can be sent off to a third party and maliciously used. It seems that the Internet Engineering Task Force has proposals to deal with this, but so far they haven't yet been implemented in the protocol. I think this is interesting. I think OAuth is best suited for web programs that connect to a third party service. Think software as a service packages like Mint.com, which connect to your bank account to import your credit card transactions. Many sites also use OAuth for authentication with social media platforms such as the login with Facebook button that you see on many websites today. I find it a little strange that they're using OAuth for this TD Ameritrade API as many of the types of applications that would want to process information about stocks probably aren't going to be mass consumer facing applications done in a web browser. 
Maybe the designers of this API over there at TD Ameritrade have big plans to not just market this to individual traders like myself, but startup companies wanting to build products around TD Ameritrade customers' data, such as a trading journal app to be marketed to mass consumers. But whatever the reason, the end result is that this authentication piece is a little rocky for Thinkorswim users like me who just want to download a list of stocks for scanning. Fortunately, the design of my stock scanner app makes this easy to implement because it is web browser enabled and can do the redirects very easily. So let's get started doing some refactoring. So I'd like to start off by showing you the schema for the database table where I'm saving my refresh token. On the Rails model for that table, I have a method that, when called, will use the most recent refresh token to initiate a web request asking for a new access token. But at this time, when I try to kick off this process, I get an invalid grant error. And that's because I haven't touched this program in several months and the refresh token expired. I'm going to have to do the manual web browser step to log into the API and get a new refresh token into this program. The last time I did this, I had to perform the steps of decoding the authorization grant code manually, and what I plan to do right now is try to help automate this so that the program works more like a true OAuth login, saving me some trouble and allowing the login process to run a little more smoothly if this happens to me again. So I'm going to add a login to TD Ameritrade link here on the home page of my application. And the first step to that is adding a route in my Rails router that will go to the home controller. In the home controller, I'm going to put a redirect which will go to the TD Ameritrade API login page. Client ID is a value provided to me by TD Ameritrade when I set my API account. Redirect URI is the callback URL to where the end user will be redirected with the authorization grant code once that end user authenticates on the TD Ameritrade end. Note that I'm encoding both values to be URL safe using CGI.escape. In OAuth, redirect URIs need to be whitelisted inside of the third party API's administrative settings. I found that with this API, if the redirect URI is not recognized, the end user will get an error message instead of the login screen when the initial redirect occurs. I also ran into a weird quirk where this API wouldn't let me specify a path other than the domain portion of the URI. Also, it only allowed me to enter a single URI. Some OAuth systems let you specify more than one domain so that you can set up additional servers for testing, but this limitation is no big deal for the single application that I'm using right here. The way I worked around this was just configuring the home controller index which sits on the domain root route, to look for a parameter named code and assume it's an authorization grant code from TD Ameritrade. This is not an ideal situation because what if there are other reasons that the code parameter might get passed into the root route, such as another OAuth API having a similar problem. But this works for now as TD Ameritrade is the only API that I'll be connecting to in this way and it's just going to be done locally on my own server. Another small issue I ran into when testing this redirect link was that despite specifying HTTP for my redirect URL, TD Ameritrade's API wanted to redirect me back to my server using HTTPS protocol when my development environment is just using HTTP. This is an understandable choice given what I mentioned earlier that the OAuth protocol relies on HTTPS to encrypt the request parameters so that the authorization grant token can't be stolen by a network hacker. There's a way to make your development server run on HTTPS, but that's a topic for another video. For now, I can just manually change the HTTPS in my URL to an HTTP. Now to get my backend code to work, I added some upgrades to the token handling part of this code, the Rails model that stores the refresh token. I added a method to get the access token using the authorization code, whereas before I was just doing the web request myself by copy-pasting the params into a program like Postman. I also added a migration to store the latest access token in addition to the refresh token, 
and their expiration times so I can store those values and won't end up wasting a request to refresh the token every time I initialize a new API client. There was a lot of coding that went into this and I could spend hours talking about the individual lines of code. To spare you the details, I'll skip to the end result and show you how this operates. The TD Ameritrade token model, where I'm storing my most recent set of API tokens, has a method named buildClient, which initiates a base class for my TD Ameritrade API Ruby gem. This class is initialized and set up to make queries with those stored credentials. If your access token expires, the gem has a method named getNewAccessToken that will use the refresh token to hit the API endpoint and update itself with a brand new access token assuming that the refresh token hasn't expired. By the way, I censored out the actual token values in this video because it's just not a good idea to share your access tokens. I also created a special wrapper class for executing commands accessing the TD Ameritrade API. I can just call the API wrapper method out of this class and place any API calls within the block. This wrapper has a special error handling functionality, such as automatically waiting and retrying a request if we get a timeout or a rate limit error. This is also the ideal place for managing the life of my API tokens, because at this point, just before performing a request, I can check whether the current access token has expired and refresh it if necessary. Doing it here allows me to just make the API call in other parts of my code, without having to worry about any API error handling or token management. Now, to demonstrate how I would use the API wrapper class, I could call the perform request method on this module directly as a class method, or I can include it in a business logic later interactor. Perform request returns a block with a client object that's all set up and ready to make API requests. Here on the command line, I'm going to run a whole lot of queries to show you what happens when it hits the rate limit. As you can see, it's going to log the error, then wait a little bit, and then continue until the rate limit wait time is over. So that's my API interface in a nutshell. If you want to see the details, check out my TD Ameritrade API Ruby gem on GitHub. I hope this video taught you something interesting about OAuth and high-level design approaches to working with APIs in Ruby. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to see more episodes where I continue making stock scanning tools in Ruby. See you next time!